In this chapter, we will use the masks we created in Photoshop to quickly and precisely sculpt a Japanese crest into our amulet. We will also learn how to use ZBrush's amazing morph brush. Okay, welcome back and thanks for your patience on that last piece. Now it's time to get back to the fun stuff. So we're going to start sculpting all the remaining details you see here for the Japanese crest. So let's get started. As you remember, in the end of the last chapter, we imported all of our different crest masks. If you haven't done that already, go ahead and do that again if you've been following along in the tutorial. And what we're going to do is, in the order of our different masks, A, B, C, etc., we're going to start just going through and sculpting this. So first off, let's uh, select our crest mask A. And again, we're going to go down here to masking and mask by alpha. And so now we have this masked. And what we want to do is go down here to inflate. Let's just do the basic inflate just a little bit. And then we'll do the inflate balloon at like maybe a three. I think that's going to be a little bit too strong. So I'm going to actually increase the inflate just a bit more. I think that's good. Now let's try an inflate balloon of like maybe two. Just remember, anytime you use that inflate balloon, if you are um, dealing with a lot of polys, just use the left click on your mouse to have the most control over that so you don't accidentally do something that ends up crashing your scene. And I'm going to bring this out just a bit more. I think this can come out some more. on the inflate axis. Let's take a look. I'm going to clear the mask. I think that should do what we need for now. So let's go ahead now and upload our next mask, Crest Mask B. Mask by Alpha. And then now we just have this section in the center. and. Remember, looking at uh, how we were doing things earlier, whenever we were hand sculpting all of this stuff, remember when we were hand sculpting this and doing kind of the layering, now that's what we're going to be doing simulating here. You can see how we have this standing up a little bit and actually going underneath the surfaces here. That's what all these different masks are going to be doing that I've created. So you can just follow along, and I recommend to increase the size of the brush. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to actually turn off symmetry. Oh, one thing that you'll see, see the details that are coming in here. The only thing about using this technique is it does stay relevant in whatever your brush is in. So you just need to make sure that you go over here and turn the alpha off. I'm going to probably make that mistake a few times, and you probably will also. So that's OK. So let's just go through and we start sculpting in some of the detail. We're just going for big forms right now. Um, really just trying to get this to separate a bit from the back, give it some depth and overlap. You can go really aggressive if you want to. I'm just kind of going minimal. And I'm trying not to go too far down here because I want the bottom of this to actually lay underneath the leaf shape. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to invert the mask by control clicking off here. And then down here, uh, looks like I had a mistake in here. That's okay. Um, let's really quickly just delete the mask for this section. Control, Alt, click, hold those down, and then we'll just remove a bit of this uh, mask here. All right. And then I'm going to smooth this out just a bit on this section. And then I'm going to bring this leaf shape out a bit so that it feels like it's standing on top. I always like switching back and forth between the masks so you can get this nice layering going on. It's a little imperfect up here, but I'm okay with that. I think we can go a bit more aggressive up here. We just have to be careful because we have everything in the back unmasked and we don't really want to affect the base below it. I'm just going to press Shift to smooth it out a bit as I'm running the brush over. Maybe come out a little bit more here and smooth that out. 
and I'm going to smooth out the edges up here just a bit too. And we're getting like a little bit of textural information in here, so I'm going to just smooth that out. Let's clear that. Already you can start to see some of the shapes are starting to pop. That's one thing I love about using this method if you ever need to have a ton of control over something. Um, this is just a, a real good way to do it. It does take longer up front, but in the end the results are really good. So now we're selecting Crest Mask C. Again, Mask by Alpha. This time you can probably guess what I'm going to do. Well, one, I'm going to fix this little error that I made here. And this time, I think I'm going to have it go downwards instead of extruding outwards. So I'm just going to change this to Z sub. <laughs> like I said, we have to remember to turn this off, alpha off. And we're just kind of pushing that down a little bit. If we clear that now, cool. Yeah, we're starting to get something that's going to catch some nice shadows. So I'm just going through, and I'm going to actually change my brush size and just smooth it out just a bit. I don't want it to go too much, otherwise we're going to lose the shape. But I do want to get rid of a little bit of the crispness. So that's coming through that. Again, just holding down Shift key to smooth that out. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Next up is Crest Mask D, Mask by Alpha. This time I'm gonna remember to turn this off. He didn't catch me this time. And uh, we're still gonna just keep doing what we've been doing. Let's go in here and layer this up a bit. This time I feel like these leaves should sit on top of these. So that's mostly what I'm focusing on. I need to switch back to Z Add. I'm trying to be careful not to really have it come up much higher under here because I like that this part's over top of the leaf. So we're mostly just focusing on the top portion of this leaf. It'll take you a little time. I'm sure you'll probably mess up a little bit at first. Also, if someone is just uh, coming back to this tutorial or starting for the first time from this step, what I've done underneath my stroke panel is I've turned off Lazy Mouse and Relative for this brush. Uh, you can keep them on. I just... Uh, it is a little bit easier for me to work without those on. So that's why I always do it. I think that's pretty good down there. I'm just gonna do the same here, kind of work in some of the more organic shapes of the leaves. And again, you know, thinking about how you have to stack stuff. Kind of takes a little while to get your mind in the right mindset for knowing how to do something like this like where you come out of Photoshop and then have this so you can have all this kind of control over everything but after you've done it a few times it really starts to make sense and I hope you guys recognize the power of this when we're done I'd be curious what uh, Joe Mena does in his workflow um, for those of you that do or don't know Joe is just an amazing toy sculptor but he also works for the uh, US Treasury, and he basically creates, if you have any quarters or uh, any of those in your pocket that have, from the U.S. that have all those different states on the back, everything, I mean, he sculpts all those. He makes all of them. So his art is literally everywhere. Kind of jealous. It's pretty cool. I'd be really curious what techniques he uses for this type of stuff, because this is basically like we're almost making a coin here. All right, I believe our next one was Crest Mask E, Mask by Alpha. Again, let's turn this off. And you can guess exactly what we're gonna do. Just building up some of those shapes again. And then going through again and just smoothing out just a bit. I really enjoy doing this kind of uh, relief work. Um, if you guys look through some of my old portfolio images, like from Unmystified, things like that, um, I use a lot of techniques like this for creating a lot of uh, 
different shapes and sculpts within things such as like these little Chinese dragons and different things that are on these um, back walls like reliefs that you would see sculpted in a, a temple. Okay, that feels pretty good. I believe we are now on Crest Mask F. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to invert that because I think we don't have anything for these bottom ones. I want to make sure we get like a, a nice shape for those two. That's the way I kind of look at things too is, you know, don't think of a mask as just one mask. Think of it as two because technically as soon as you invert that, you get to work on two different shapes. The thing about this too, it's just, it's so quick, it's so accurate, <laughs> you know, but you have to do that time investment up front. So crest mask F, we have that on here. Once again, turning this off. This one, what I wanted to do in here is separate these a little bit. So I'll do that in just a second. Um, here we go. First, I want this one to come up above a bit. And this one as well, kind of make it feel like there's some layering going on here. Same with down here. This one I have to be a little bit careful of because otherwise I come down past here and you get the line going on. And then we'll just pop this one a bit so it feels like it stands up. No surprises here. I think you guys know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, this one, I just want kind of like the stem of this piece to pop a bit more. So that's what I'm doing here, just bringing that out a bit. Sorry that my voice keeps cracking and different things. Um, I'm getting over a, a pretty bad cold. I actually had to stop recording earlier this morning because I had a scratch in my throat and I was just coughing nonstop. So I think that was like the last chapter at the beginning of it. <laughs> if I My voice sounds totally different in a few of the uh, sections of that, that's because I was having to take a couple hours break in between for my throat to rest up. Um, okay, so we're going to go back really quickly. I think I didn't smooth out some of those little sections. Let's do that so we just get a nicer blend. Uh, oh, up here, let's invert this. Control click on the side. Um, cool. Because this feels like it needs to layer on top just a bit. All right. That's cool. This is already looking really nice, um, very controlled. And then now we just need to have that final uh, stemming detail. So let's go to Crest Mask G, our final mask, Mask by Alpha. And then I'm going to turn off this. So this is going to allow us to get those really precise details, the stems and everything else. Now, before we do this, I want you guys to store a morph target. And this is a pretty cool technique for those of you guys that do or don't use the morph target brush. After this, I guarantee you will use it a lot. So click on Store Morph Target, and we'll come back to that in a few minutes. Don't worry about that right now. Um, and now we're going to go back to our deformation, and let's use a negative inflate to just uniformly bring down some of these values. I could just go through and then paint things out, but it's going to be a little bit inaccurate. So I want things to feel like they're kind of evenly done. Ooh, that is way too deep. Actually, I think I'm going to do this numerically to make sure I get the setting right. I'm going to use my mouse again, left click in here. Let's give this like a negative seven. I think that's still a little bit too strong. Let's call it a negative five. Just going to clear that, see what that looks like. I, I just don't want this feeling too CG. Um, I think that'll be good. And this is where the morph target comes in. So morph target basically stores your mesh at whatever um, value it was at the time you click the morph target. So just to really clearly demonstrate this, I'm going to do a, a really big deformation on this thing. Obviously, you know, we don't want a huge lump like this. But let's press B on our keyboard and then M. Let's find that morph target or morph brush. Click that. Now we have morph brush. Now once we do this, because we stored a morph target, it basically, anywhere you touch, it just brings it back to 
what that original state was. So, um, you know, we can paint this out to get that thing to fall back. And then in here, what I was planning to use that for is to do like a slow kind of fade off on everything because right now it's that perfect indentation. So we'd be able to go through and then, you know, you can kind of fade things off. So I'm just going to undo a few times. Okay, cool. So going back. Okay, um, I think I need to store another morph target. I think I went too far. Store morph target. There we go. So once again, let's do the deformation. I believe we had it at negative five. I'm going to clear the mask. And then now let's go through here and just use our morph brush, as you can see, is selected. And actually, I think we're done with the alphas for now, so I'm going to close this so we get more screen space. Let's just paint out some of this so that um, we get kind of like that more CG feel. I'm going to turn down the intensity. Sorry, non-CG feel. I want to get rid of that CG feel. You know, for example, maybe these, like a craftsman, as they're cutting, they start here and then the chisel would go out and that would mean towards the end it gets a little bit thinner. So perhaps you'd come here and just brush that along the side and it'll feel like it kind of fades and blends into the original surface. Love, 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 love the morph brush. We're going to be using this quite a bit actually. And I promise you, you will be too in the future with your workflow. The thing that's so great about the Morph Brush, too, is it allows you to just quickly experiment on uh, some techniques or brushes, and then if things didn't work out, you just paint it all back out. I mean, you can do that kind of with the layering system as well, um, but I honestly don't use the layers that much just because they get pretty heavy. Um, I know a lot of people do use layers, but uh, I like to just move along really quickly here. Yeah, just kind of, once again, fading this. I don't want it to feel like a cookie cutter print. By the way, thanks again for taking the time to watch this tutorial. This one I actually presented three times last year, one time at the ZBrush Art Summit. It was like a five hour class where people got to follow along that was really fun and then I did it again at uh, Tokyo Japan um, luckily I speak Japanese so I was be able to I was able to say a lot of it in Japanese but I did have translators which helped out a lot uh, that was pretty tricky with jet lag and trying to get it all done but it seemed to work out and then I presented this again in um, Australia for a really amazing event uh, to a lot of students and professionals down there so now I'm happy to be able to share it with everyone out here in the world. And by the way, thanks everyone for all the support, like checking out that ornamental design sculpting thing on YouTube. Uh, that thing just got tons and tons of hits, the one for the uh, skull. So I know some of the techniques I'm doing in this tutorial are similar. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm actually looking forward to see what you guys do too. So. That's it. You know, we don't have to do too much more on this design. Um, I think really quickly while I'm in this chapter, uh, we'll also go through and we'll just do these kind of designs. And for that, probably what I'll do is um, just start sculpting in here and then uh, speed up the recording so you don't have to listen to me mumbling the entire time and watch me painfully and slowly sculpting away. But what I want to do now is I'm actually going to go through and well, I don't need to clear my morph target. I'm gonna keep that in here for now. I'm gonna go back to our damn standard brush that we had selected earlier. I'm gonna move that down to a really small size, something like that I think is pretty good. Maybe a little bigger. That's too big. I think that'll work. And then we're gonna turn on the um, symmetry again. But since this logo or this thing wasn't put in here perfectly, we just have to be careful whenever we have symmetry coming towards the, uh, the side of the crest here. I think I can do it up here, but then as I get closer up here, I'm going to have to turn symmetry off. So anyways, um, I'm just going to 
go ahead and start doing this with the speed sped up. All right, so that pretty much covers up all of the detailed sculpting that we're going to need for this piece. And the next chapter, we're going to be using the noise modifiers uh, in combination with the clay tool in order to get some weathering on here, kind of like you see here, where we're chipping away at the sides. And that's going to help us uh, really break up some of that CG feel. This tutorial and its downloadable content is available now on my QBrush, Gumroad, and Steam stores, which are linked in the description below. Watch the following video to see what is included with your purchase. If you purchase this tutorial, here is a preview of all the bonus content you will receive. Firstly, in ZBrush, I've included three different versions of the amulet. One, my final sculpted version with all the ornamentational details and destruction. Two, just the sculptural details like ornamentation. Three, a version without anything so you could follow along and create your own during the process. Secondly, you will receive the final Keyshot file demonstrated here, which contains all of the texture maps, lighting, and everything that is shown during the tutorial. The thing that I find really useful about this is having access to the material graph and seeing the complex custom materials that are created during the tutorial. This will really help you with understanding how to create your own complex materials in Keyshot. Next, you will receive all of the final PSD files showcased throughout the tutorial, including this gold-painted Mount Fuji design with all of my different layering processes, as well as the custom crest base that is used later for sculpting in ZBrush based off of masks. Also, you'll get all of the final texture maps that are showcased during the tutorial, such as these, which are all tileable. You will also receive all of the original videos in downloaded format at their full high definition resolution. Also, I have included dozens of high quality personal art images such as my Dark Souls 3 High Lord of Walnor fan art, which inspired me to create the amulet tutorial to showcase the techniques I learned and developed during the process. Whether you purchase this tutorial or follow along for free on Facebook or YouTube, thank you for your continued support and I cannot wait to see the epic amulets you create soon.